Right, this segment should be a little bit lighter. Our goal is to properly figure out whether we should enable the save button based on if the user has met the two conditions in order to save a new game. First is they have to have picked out every image, and second, they have to fill out a custom game name. The first condition is if the size of the chosen image URIs list is not equal to the number of images required. And that means the user hasn't picked enough images for the memory game size desired. And in this case, we'll simply return false. The button should not be enabled. The other condition is around the length of the game name that the user creates for this memory board. Obviously, an empty name is invalid, but we also want to mandate a minimum length of the name. For example, a single letter like A or B shouldn't be a valid name. So we're going to have two conditions. If the etgameName.txt if it's blank, or if the length is less than three, then we want to return false. And otherwise, we can return true, which would enable the button. We're currently calling this method should enable save button whenever the user has picked an image, but we also would like to call it whenever the text of that edit text at the bottom for the game name has changed. So in the onCreate method, we're going to add a text change listener on etgameName. We have to provide as the parameter a text watcher, so the object text watcher, and this has three methods that we need to override. And we only really care about the first one, after text change. So I'm just gonna delete the body for the other two and leave them as empty. And the logic here is very simple. We're simply going to call that method should enable save button again, and that will dictate the is enabled property of the BTN save. So every time the user makes any modification in that edit text, we will potentially enable the save button. One more thing that we should do here is set a maximum length of the game name. So if the text of the game is too long, it'll be painful to share it with friends and family. And so we're going to restrict the maximum length to be 14 characters. And this turns out to be pretty straightforward. There's a filters attribute on the edit text, and we are going to set that equal to an array of filters. And we're gonna pass in one filter, and it'll be an inbuilt filter, called input filter dot length filter, and we pass in 14, which is the maximum allowable length. The result of what we've done is that the minimum length of a game name is three characters and the maximum is 14. This is a general good engineering practice, which is always validating user input. No matter what the user does, the application should never crash. And the steps we've taken here help to prevent anything unexpected from happening. Along those lines, one more good practice is to define constants for these key values. For example, the minimum game length and the maximum game length can both be constants. So min game name length will be three and max will be 14. So now it's very obvious in the code what these magic numbers represent. So I'll pass in the max game length and the min game length as appropriate. Awesome. So at this point, if the save button is enabled based on the logic we wrote, the user should be able to take the data that they've collected and save all that to Firebase so anyone in the world can play their custom memory game. So in order to make that happen, let's add a click listener on the save button. And the code that we'll execute when the button is clicked is going to be a method that we're going to define in a little bit called save data to Firebase. This method is responsible for taking all the images and the associated game name and saving that to Firebase. So let's have Android Studio create this function. And I'm gonna move this private function down below any of the other override functions that we have. The actual logic of integrating with Firebase, we will do that in a subsequent segment. But for now, I want to put a log statement here and I want to write some logic for downscaling the image. And the reason why I wanna downscale is because the images typically on your phone are gonna be quite large, more than a megabyte or two megabytes. And we're only showing you the image in the memory game in a very small square. So downscaling the image means that we are able to use up less storage in Firebase storage. And also when we download the image, it'll be faster to download. If you only have a few hundred users, then the amount of storage you're gonna take up on Firebase storage is gonna be minimal anyway. So feel free to skip this part if you're not interested, but it's also something interesting to learn about. So let's put a log statement here. And I'm going to have a for loop, which now iterates over the chosen image URIs. And we're going to iterate through it with both the index and the element. And I'll call that photo URI. So we'll have this chosen image URIs that with index. 
So I'm going to define a method called get image byte array. And this will take in a photo URI. And this will return to us a image byte array. And that image byte array is what we're actually going to be uploading to Firebase storage. And this method is going to take care of all of the downgrading of quality that we want. So let's define this method. And the return type should be a byte array. The first thing we'll do here is get the original bitmap based on the photo URI. And this will depend on the API version of the phone that this app is running on. So I'll call this original bitmap. And if the build.version.sdkint is greater than or equal to P, which is Android Pi, then the way to get the original bitmap is by using something called image decoder.create source, content resolve photo URI, and then we call image decoder.decode bitmap with that source. Otherwise, if we're running a lower version, then we'll say media store.images.media.get bitmap content resolver with the photo URI. So if this conditional is interesting. What it means is that if the phone operating system that we're running on is running Android Pi or higher, then the original bitmap will come from running those two lines of code. And otherwise, on an older version, we'll run this one line of code in order to get the original bitmap. Now let's log the width and height of the original bitmap so we can compare the size now versus after we scale it down. So we'll log at the info level, original bitmap.width and original bitmap.height. So I'm gonna invent a method here called bitmap scalar dot scale to fit height, passing the original bitmap along with 250. Let's define this class now, and I'm gonna extract it to a separate file and put it into the utils directory, tap on okay. And the idea of bitmap scalar, similar to permissions util dot kotlin, which we defined earlier, is simply to create a nicer looking API or a nicer looking method around some of the Android APIs. So rather than typing out the code, I'm just gonna paste it in, and then we can talk about it. So as the comments describe, the intention of these methods is to keep the same aspect ratio of the bitmap, but scale it down as per the width or height passed in. You can read through the math that's happening here in order to scale the bitmap appropriately. It's not that complicated. But the broader point here is that whenever you're able to take something complicated or harder to understand, and wrap that around something simpler, that's a big win. Computer science is largely about communication. And what we've done here is we've taken something which is harder to communicate and wrapped that complexity into something which makes it much simpler. And that's a huge win. Now let's turn this into an object because this is a utility class. It doesn't make sense to have multiple instances of bitmap scalar. So we can just call bitmap scalar dot scale to fit height with a height of 250. And once we've done that, now let's print out the scaled bitmap width and height. The last thing we need to do in this function is to return the byte array. And so at the bottom of the function, we're going to define a new byte array output stream. We'll take our scaled bitmap and then call the compress method on it. And we'll pass in a comp compress format of JPEG. The second parameter is the quality reduction. 100 means no reduction in quality and zero means a severe downgrade in quality. So we'll pass in 60 here, and then we'll pass in the byte array output stream that we just defined. And finally, we'll return byte output stream dot two byte array. So at this point, we have gone through and downscaled the quality of each image the user has selected. The job for the next part will be to figure out how to upload this to Firebase storage. If you learned something from this video, hit that like button, drop a comment, and don't forget to subscribe so you know when the next part comes out. See you soon.